You are listening to We Saw the Devil, an investigative and conversational true crime podcast that deep dives into fascinating criminal cases that are solved, unsolved, or ongoing. From America's Lori Vallow to Germany's Armin Mivas, we examine and discuss the world's most shocking cases. If you're enjoying the show, don't forget to follow us online. Check us out at WeSawTheDevil.com and we saw the Devil on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget, you can become part of the show by backing us on Patreon. Hello, everyone. You are listening to We Saw the Devil. This is Robin, and I am here with that crazy case out of Alabama. We have a nationwide manhunt going on. If you're not familiar, this is the case of Vicki White, a corrections officer with a very long exemplary history, as well as the inmate who she is accused of breaking out of jail, Casey White, who is already serving a 75-year sentence and is awaiting a new trial for capital murder charges. It's absolutely batshit. So before we get into it, let's just get our quick housekeeping out of the way. You're listening to We Saw the Devil. You can find us all across social media, mostly at the handle We Saw the Devil. The website is wesawthedevil.com. And if you're liking the show, loving the show, want to financially back the show and become part of the team, you can do so at our Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash We Saw the Devil. I wanted to get this really quick episode out of the way because this is 100% going to be a case to cover and follow. And then this week, I have a few case updates. There's a lot of stuff going on in the news right now that I feel needs to be covered. I wanted to get this episode out. And later this week, there are a couple cool things coming down the pipeline. But let's go ahead and get into this. Let's start with what we know about these individuals as a whole, okay? So let's start with 38-year-old inmate Casey Cole White. What do we know? Casey Cole White grew up in the rural town of Leicester, Alabama, which is directly like right on the southern border of my state here, Tennessee. If you think of the state of Tennessee, it is quite literally exactly in the middle of the southern border, just across right into Alabama and Limestone County. It borders Lauderdale County, which is where this whole story in the last two weeks has unfolded. As of 2019, Leicester had a population of 157 people. Casey was a varsity football player at West Limestone High School and was known for his hulking six foot nine, 300 plus pound stature, as well as being quiet and sometimes polite. However, he was known to get into trouble as a teenager. Like he had that switch. In the mid-2000s, he had dozens of arrests and became very well known to law enforcement as a repeat offender. However, at this point, none of his charges had been exceptionally violent or scary. Just things like public intoxication, uh, drunk driving, reckless driving. I mean, those are both scary, horrible things, but not murder, rape, violence, burglary, things like that. Just drunk driving, reckless driving, public intox, theft, charges like that. But that changed in 2006 when he was arrested on a domestic violence and harassment charge involving his own mother. Now, those charges were eventually dropped, but what I found most interesting about this is the replies that he gave with, you know, on his arresting record. He listed his occupation as, quote, fired last week. And then when officers asked for his list of monthly expenses, he wrote, quote, just survive. In 2008, Casey White was dating a 31 year old woman by the name of Christy Shelton. She was a single mother of one daughter, a girl by the name of Summer Mitchell. And one night, Casey was at Christie's Lexington, Alabama home. No one knows to this day exactly what happened, but Christie Shelton was found dead the next day with a gunshot wound to the chest. Investigators would later admit that it was a sawed-off shotgun. Of course, since Casey White was with Christie Shelton on the day of her death, and due to his, at this point, extensive criminal record, he became the prime suspect. However, police actually cleared Casey, and he went on his way. Christy Shelton's death was ultimately ruled a suicide, and not a single member of her family believed it to be. Seven years later, in December of 2015, White's violent criminal history grew yet again. He had recently been dumped by a girlfriend. And side note, every single news article refuses to name this person out of courtesy as she is potentially in danger. I will also, for the sake of this episode, in respect of her privacy, will also not be giving her name. 
Instead of Casey letting that relationship go, he actually began to stalk this girl. He followed her to work uh, while she went on errands. He even decked himself out in camo so he could hide more easily. He even stalked her ultimately to the new house that she had moved into. On Tuesday, December 2nd of 2015, the ex-girlfriend got off work and went home to a small home that she shared with male friends. Now, Casey White believed that she was in a romantic relationship with one of the men, so he decided to make a move. The ex-girlfriend and two men were in the middle of a horror movie, and Casey White burst into the home armed with two guns, one in each hand. Much to his surprise, the two men on the couch were cuddling and holding hands. His ex was just also sitting there. Her cheating didn't really check out, but at that point, he had other priorities. He told everyone to get down, which they did, and it became very clear very quickly that he was going to kill all three of them that evening, probably starting with the ex-girlfriend. Due to the screaming and commotion, one of the men's dog, Charles Abernathy is his name, his dog, a bloodhound and German Shepherd rescue named Missy Britches, bound into the living room and bit Casey White. That gave the ex-girlfriend time to get up and run down the hallway and out of the back of the house. The two male roommates ran for the bathroom and climbed out of the window. As everyone was running down the hallway and running to the bathroom, Casey White was was firing shots at all of them. Unfortunately, he also shot the dog dead in the living room. So rest in peace, Missy Britches. You are a hero. And side note on that, I found a video interview with Charles Abernathy, um, one of the men who was in the home. I'm not sure if this video was taken down or what uh, due to people's safety being a concern, but he was so kind and he was so distraught over losing his dog. Like he loved her so much and talked about how sweet she was, um, showed pictures of her. She recognized and the animals are so amazing. She recognized that his life was probably in danger and she attacked Casey White. He said that she, he'd never seen any aggression from her before, but he credits Missy Britches with saving his life. So after the three of them escaped, Casey White went out the front door and took off. Responding police found Missy Britches dead in the hallway, bullet holes riddling the entire interior of the house, and the ex-girlfriend's two minor children hiding in the basement. About an hour later, police received a 911 call from a man saying that Casey White had broken into his home, held him at gunpoint, and demanded money. The man didn't have any cash, but Casey took his keys, his Ford Explorer, as well as his 9mm handgun. About 30 minutes later, there was a third 911 call. This time, it came from the Tennessee Welcome Center down south on I-65, just into Tennessee coming you know, out of Alabama. Apparently, Casey White approached a woman who was sitting in her car uh, at the rest stop in the parking lot. He demanded that she open her door. She refused. So what does Casey White decide to do? Like, what's the best alternative in his mind? He just starts free firing into her car, shooting her in the arm. He then got back into his Ford Escape and then just got off of I-65 just a couple exits down. There, he got out of his car and carjacked a Lincoln sedan at gunpoint. Does Casey White continue to go north? Does he continue out across Tennessee? No. He actually heads back to Limestone County, Alabama. So, of course, deputies immediately spotted him coming back in, and then they pursued him in a high-speed chase until the dumbass Casey White got the Lincoln sedan stuck in a muddy field. Now, in their interrogation of him, he was very, very, very clear about two separate things. One, he told them that he wanted to kill his ex-girlfriend and then have police kill him. He told officers that his only regret about the entire evening was that neither of those uh, neither of those items were successful. Not only that, but he said that if he is ever released from prison in any way, that he will go back to kill her. Also that evening, he threatened to kill his ex's sister as well. Casey White was finally convicted four years later in February of 2019. He was convicted of a total of nine charges, including trying to kill his ex-girlfriend and kidnapping her two roommates. Other charges included first-degree robbery, first-degree burglary, third-degree burglary, breaking and entering, animal cruelty, and attempting to elude. And he's also actually still facing charges in Giles County, Tennessee, from this particular crime spree on that day. In any case, he was sentenced to 75 years in prison. Now, in June of 2020, while in prison serving that 75-year sentence, he actually sent a letter to state law enforcement confessing to a brutal murder of a 59-year-old woman by the name of Connie Ridgway. 
Uh, that murder took place on October 23rd of 2015. Connie Ridgway had been found dead at her home in the Meadowland Apartments on Prince Drive in Rogersville after neighbors called police for a welfare check. She had been found mercilessly stabbed to death. Now, why Casey White decided to confess to this isn't clear. One idea is that he wanted to stay in the Lauderdale County Jail as opposed to the William Donaldson Correctional Facility in Bessemer. Uh, That's where he was going to be serving his 75-year sentence. Confessing to murder and having an additional trial would ensure that he would at least be returned to the jail for the trial and the hearings and so forth. Casey told investigators that he was hired to murder Connie Ridgway and was able to provide details from the crime scene that had never been made public. At the time of last week's disappearance, Casey White was awaiting trial for this case, having been charged with two counts of capital murder. Okay, switching gears. That's Casey White. Who's Vicky White? And there's kind of a limited amount of information about Vicki White because she's just hasn't really done much. Uh, She's a 56-year-old widow with no children. Uh, She's 5'5", roughly 160 pounds. She has long blonde hair. And here's my favorite thing that I think I've ever heard in my entire life. I'm not kidding. According to descriptions given by investigators and, and whatnot, she has a, quote, waddling gait. If I am ever described as having a waddling gait or a waddler, as I have seen her called, please just let me go. I assure you that my own sense of self-worth and self-esteem is a worse punishment than anything that law could do to me. Just fuck. But Vicki White had been known at the detention center as an exemplary employee. She had an unblemished record. That is the phrase that keeps popping up in every article about her. Just unblemished, loved by all of her coworkers, beautiful record, great employee, you know, the whole bit. I mean, she'd worked at the Lauderdale County Detention Center in Florence for 17 years. 17 years. That's a very long time to stay with one employer. For the months leading up to this disappearance, she had been talking about going into retirement and then moving to the beach. And her retirement was finally made into a reality when she was scheduled to retire a week and a half ago on April 29th, the very day that Vicky and Casey disappeared. Her colleagues had planned a retirement party complete with cake in her honor, and she was supposed to sign her retirement papers at the end of the day. So what in the world happened? It is believed that Vicky and Casey White, who are unrelated, by the way, first met during Casey's arraignment for capital murder charges in the death of Connie Ridgway. Since their disappearance, it has become well known via both an internal investigation as well as from statements made by other inmates that Vicky and Casey had a, quote, special relationship. And at this time, no one believes that it ever really had turned physical in nature, at least while she was there. Casey would just get special privileges, extra food on his tray, uh, extra items, and then on her days off, she would talk to him on the phone. Well, six weeks ago, Vicky sold her home and land in a quick sale for $95,500. That's well below the actual value of $235,000. Like, she did that, obviously, to get some quick cash. She then moved in with her mother until last week, where she checked into a hotel close to her place of employment. She also, over the last couple of weeks, purchased a 2007 Orange Ford Edge. From that sale, she also withdrew $90,000 in cash from her bank account. So at 9.29 a.m. on the morning of April 29th, while working her final day at the Lauderdale Detention Center, Vicki White instructed another officer to prepare Casey Cole White for transport. Her reasoning was that she had to take him to a nearby courthouse in Florence for a mental health evaluation. And then she said that, well, I don't feel well. I feel kind of sick myself. So I have a doctor's appointment. So don't worry. I'll be back eventually, you know, depending on my doctor's appointment. But everything is all good, you know, all taken care of. Surveillance footage that has been made public now shows Casey White, who again is six foot nine and now at this point weighs about 330 pounds. I mean, he has bigger tatas than I do walking through the facility into the awaiting cruiser, into Vicky White's cruiser. You see Vicky White pull up at 929. You see her go inside. Another officer got him ready and shackled. And then you see Vicky White leading Casey White to her cruiser. They disappear. They left the jail on Seminary Street near downtown Florence and at 941 a.m. 
supposedly, you know, as Vicky claimed, heading to that courthouse, which was only, by the way, only a half a mile away. Instead, Vicky White drove the opposite direction directly from the jail to the Florence Square shopping center. Again, a surveillance video made public shows Vicky White driving her cruiser at 9.49 a.m. at an intersection about eight minutes after they left the jail. Casey White, at that time, was still in the back of the cruiser. So after they made it to the shopping center, they ditched the cruiser and got into that 2007 Ford Edge that Vicky White had recently purchased. Around 3.30 in the afternoon, again, afternoon, a booking officer at the jail reported to his boss that he couldn't get in touch with Vicky White. And after a search of the inmates and a roll call, it became very clear very quickly that Casey White was not back in the jail as of yet. He had been gone the whole day. And this little excerpt is from an Alabama.com uh, article. Uh, shortly after 11 a.m., a citizen spotted Vicky White's patrol vehicle in the parking lot of a Florence shopping center. At 11.34 a.m., about two hours after the pair left the jail, a Florence police officer saw White's patrol vehicle. It was parked among vehicles that were listed for sale. So not only did Vicky White ditch her car, she also tried to conceal it. So what's going on now? On April 29th, the state of Alabama issued a blue alert which those are sent when law enforcement officers are believed to have been harmed. And it was immediately made public that they believe that the two are armed and dangerous. Uh, They believe that they have access to an AR-15 and a shotgun, which Vicki White recently bought. Again, don't forget, Vicki White has $90,000 in cash that she just withdrew. And then on May 5th, this past Thursday, about 11 p.m., The orange Ford Edge was identified at a towing yard in the Bethesda area of Williamson County in Tennessee. It had actually been sitting there since the day of the escape on the 29th, but had not been linked to the actual case until Thursday night. The car, per Williamson County Sheriff's Department, said that it had been reported as abandoned on Friday, April 29th. There were no tags, no license plate, and it was locked. Uh, Apparently, they had also made a really shitty attempt at covering it up using green spray paint, like on the side. Officials are describing it as a, quote, botched paint job. And what's so crazy about this is that the spot where this, their car was found is only 20 minutes from where I live. So they were down in Alabama, and then they were making their way north on I-65. What's so crazy is that this all happened very, very quickly. People in Tennessee actually found that car abandoned before the people at the Lauderdale County Jail even knew they were missing. So this was like a boom, boom, boom situation. They got the hell out of Alabama, they made it in Tennessee, and they immediately dumped that car. So now we're like at one week later, and who knows where they are. We are now nine days after their escape. It was obviously well-planned, at least the beginning portion um, has been. And now there is a lot of concern for Vicki White. As Casey Cole White's criminal history has come out and what he's capable of, what he's doing, what he's done to people, murder, you know, multiple counts of murder, was Vicki White just a means to an end? Was she the vessel that he manipulated and he used to get out of jail. And furthermore, what's happening to that $90,000 that she withdrew in cash from multiple banks in her in her area. And it's so horrible because Casey White's ex-girlfriend, the one that sent him to prison for 75 years, she now has a fiance. She has children. Uh, she has moved out of Alabama to an unknown state, unknown location. What's going to happen to her? She actually has protection now from uh, apparently her state uh, law enforcement agencies because of this. Is Casey White going to try to find her and kill her? As he promised, as he made very, very, very clear many, 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 many times. What's going to happen to Vicki White? Are police going to find her murdered along the way? It's just a heinous case all the way around. So definitely following this to see how it ends. It's very clear, at least, that they were heading heading north. I almost wonder if they're going to try to hit up Appalachian Trail. I don't know. They have one hell of a head start, that is for sure. Those who have met Casey White say that 
uh, especially Charles Abernathy from the attempted murder and attempted kidnapping said that he is close to a Ted Bundy uh, slash like Jeffrey Dahmer type of figure who will kill without remorse, human, child, animal, whatever, just absolutely zero remorse. And it's also really fascinating to me when women and not just women who write killers in prison to become pen pals, like, you know, they've done it for all of the major serial killers. Don't forget Charles Manson had a whole host of women, one who even married him while he was in prison. Women who work in law enforcement, criminal justice as officers. Apparently, it is very, very, very common for inmates to study officers, especially uh, in particular female officers, to f- see what their weaknesses are, what their insecurities are, and then attempt to manipulate them with the I'm not, you know, I'm not guilty. I'm not a bad guy. I'm innocent. I'm in here mistakenly. Apparently, that is very, very, very common. So did Vicki White fall prey to that? Did she fall victim to that? level of manipulation. You would hope after 17 years in a particular job that she'd probably seen every single trick in the book. However, she did have that quote unquote special relationship with Casey White after meeting him in his arraignment. When he went back to the state prison in Bessemer, she would call him there. Uh, And then when he came back to Lauderdale, she would utilize her power and flex it to get him special uh, conveniences and special privileges. How do you guys feel about it? Do you think that this is going to, that they are going to be caught together? Uh, Do you think that Casey White is going to kill Vicky White and leave her behind as he tries to make the getaway with the money? How do you guys feel like this is going to end? But that's it for this episode, guys. Hope you enjoyed hearing the fuller version of this entire story. It is very scary. Again, you've been listening to We Saw the Devil. Don't forget to check out our website at wesawthedevil.com. From there, you can find us all across social media or at the handle We Saw the Devil. And then if you are liking the show, digging it, want to become part of the team, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash we saw the devil. Until next crime.